welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today. If you are joining me for the very first time, welcome. Um, today might be kind of a, a fun little peek into my current project. Uh, I've been away from this for a little bit. And so today I thought what I would do is um, kind of just to get myself reacquainted with this journal and where I am in it, I thought I would do a flip through of the first signature with you. I've started two more, um, but I think I'm going to wait on those uh, before I show them. So uh, if you are just joining me, I'm working on a vintage grunge junk journal. It's a huge uh, flip from the last project that I worked on. And I've been away from it, like I said, for a little bit. So if you are curious as to what has been going on, nothing bad, but um, I will kind of give you a clue at the end of the video. So for those of you who are curious. So um, I'm going to just work on, obviously this is not going to fit by the time I'm finished with all my signatures. So a few videos ago I had mentioned that I might be needing to make a new cover and I'm going to do that. It's going to still be the same style with the recycled food packaging, um, but I need it to have a thicker spine, I think, by the end. So I'm going to um, set this aside and the next two signatures that I'm working on and I will just do a flip through of the first thing, signature. So if you have been following the series at all, and I will put a link um, to the entire series in the description. I was inspired by a ghost town in California called Bodie. I had been there a few years ago and taken tons and tons of pictures because I just love junk and grunge and vintage and all that kind of thing. <clears throat> so I decided I would finally use those uh, pictures for this uh, vintage grunge junk journal. So I kind of, um, the theme, I, I hope that you see throughout it is that in Bodhi, you only get to look through the windows. You didn't, don't get to go into the buildings. Um, the town was established as a uh, town in about 1865, I want to say, maybe 56. I'm, I might be getting dyslexic there. Um, but in the you know mid-1800s, and then um, until about 1915. There were people there much later than that, but as far as being a booming gold mining town, um, it would have been the mid-1800s to the early 1900s. So I, I've taken my photos that I took through the windows, and I wanted to have that feel of the past and kind of looking through layers. So I've mentioned this in other videos, but for those of you who might just be catching me the first time, um, that's kind of what this vintage journal is all about. So um, it's kind of taken on some changes. When I first thought I would do this, I've never um, made a complete journal with a book cover and all um, where you've sewn in the signatures in this fashion. So I was kind of, you know, winging it as I go. And I wasn't sure how I, as a person, um, would like to approach it if I wanted to just make the signatures with blank pages and sew them into my book and then decorate them, or if I wanted to um, do them complete and then put them in. I thought I was going to do kind of a hybrid thing where I would do um, kind of any stitching, sewing, certain things that may need to be done before it went into a book. I thought I would do that and then decorate after, but I think I'm learning something about myself. I think once I get focused on a signature or a theme or anything like that, I really want to take it to the end because if I jump to something else a little bit different, which in this case, each signature is kind of representing different buildings in the in Bodhi, I kind of felt scattered and like I kept wanting to come back to this signature and do more of the details. So I've done that since you last saw this journal with me. Uh, so I wanted to share some of the things. Um, there are previous videos of different techniques and things that I used in this signature. So you can go back and watch those. I'll reference them here, but I'm not going to go into hopefully too great a detail. And then I think for the, the later signatures, I will you know, share as I have something to show or some kind of new technique. So you may not get to see it as often as you want, but we'll see what, we're, we'll see what happens. So I thought I'd start the book out um, like a book with kind of a title page. So I've used um, just some vellum 
And vellum, if you've ever used it, when you crease it tight, uh, sharp, it, it becomes brittle the more you open and close it. So I thought if I just sew this into my journal, it's gonna break apart at some point and then it's not gonna be in the book anymore. So I have reinforced it with some of my rusted fabric. Um, so that way it's sturdy. And I just put that on with a glue stick. I didn't want it to be too wet um, and get ripply, which it will in um, with vellum. So I just used a glue stick, tried to use as little as possible, and that worked. I thought about stitching it, but I think I'm just going to leave it like this. And then the actual uh, little picture of the town, you can see it's kind of blurry. I took that off of the internet. Um, actually, no, I didn't. I had, There's a billboard um, in Bodie, and I almost think that's where I took this. It was a photo of, it said, welcome to Bodhi um, with this picture. So because I took a photograph of it and then um, scanned it and printed it, it came out kind of grainy, um, especially doing it on the vellum. But I don't mind that because it's a ghost town and I kind of don't mind that it's not completely clear. So that's my title page. And then I didn't want to just go into my book. This first signature is kind of representing a house in Bodhi. Um, so I kind of wanted just a little buffer between that first title page and the, the first page. So I've just put, this is just some um, natural unbleached uh, cooking parchment that came on a roll and I just cut it to the size that I needed. So I liked kind of that it gave me that tissue paper kind of feel, but maybe a little sturdier. So that's that page. And then, then I had my, um, if you've been following along, you know that I went ahead on this journal like the last one and I've designed some of my own papers. So this is what I'm calling my fresco papers where I just wanted to get some grungy water stained paint looking papers. Those are available in my Etsy shop and I'll put the link down below. Um, I've now since um, adding the fresco. I've also done some wallpaper finishes. Um, so there's a couple of different packs um, and they're in my Etsy shop. So I'll have the link to both of those. And then this was a photo of a house um, that I took. And I, I took all of my photos that I'm using in this journal and I've run them through an, an app on my phone, uh, a filter that makes them look like a vintage photo. So that way my brand new photos of this old ghost town look like old photos. So I did one and then I just um, kind of zoomed in on just the door. Um, I really liked how the, the there was still a sheer drapery or something hanging in the window that was kind of tattery. And then I wanted it to open because I really want that feeling of you're looking through to something else. So on this one, I have um, put a piece of really heavy acetate from like a recycled uh, thank you card box I think I used. Um, and this door, I lined in book page to make it a little sturdier than just the, uh, I think I printed this on cardstock. And then on the inside, uh, I wanted it to kind of peek through to something. So even though I don't have these all tight in there, you can see I used one of Tim Holtz um, paper dolls, a woman that I thought looked about that era and the scale fit. So I just kind of tucked her inside on another page where you'd see her through the door. And then on the inside of the door, like on the inside of, of these homes, there was lots of tattered wallpaper, um, layers and layers. So again, you see the book page through and I've kind of uh, grunged it up a bit with some Distress Oxide um, pads. And then uh, this is some Tim Holtz worn wallpaper. I wasn't able to share, obviously because of licensing, his, uh, his wallpaper packs that I um, altered to be like grungy wallpaper. So I ended up making my own pack of uh, wallpaper that I did with a jelly plate technique. So you'll see that there's a video on how I did that, but then also a paper pack on my Etsy shop where if you don't want to, you know, make your own where you can get that vintage wallpaper feel. So my next page in my signature um, was one of my uh, grungy fresco finishes that I took, that I had done on book page, and I just folded it so it's small, um, but I just wrapped it around so that it could be um, a little small uh, page. So I've got that with her, and I had made some hinges, um, 
not turned out the greatest, but I used an actual rusty hinge that I have um, and scanned it and scaled it down and um, cut it out on my Cricut to make these old hinges. And then on the inside of that page, that first page, I've added a little bit of the torn wall, worn wallpaper from Tim Holtz collection. And then on the inside of that, I used my old typewriter to type If These Walls Could Talk. I actually have a book called If These Walls Could Talk that's like stories about um, homes kind of thing. So um, uh, just that made me think of that, you know, all the stories in these walls. And then I had just made a little tuck here. Um, I had recently purchased a Vagabond 2 um, embossing uh, and die cut machine. And so I was playing around with that. And this is a damask um, embossing on a book page. So it kind of had that old tin ceiling um, kind of look I was trying to find. And then again, I lined it with some of my rusted fabric that I made and just made a little pocket there. And since I've shown these before, but I went ahead and I had a little paper pack that had some little um, fussy cuts. And it was actually a fussy cut of an envelope, that, like a little coin envelope that already said telegram on it. And then an actual little telegram. So I, the only thing I did was add some vintage photo to it. And then I used my teeny tiny hole punch to just um, punch holes because, you know, in these, they would come off these machines with those those holes on the sides. So I did add that. That's just a little journaling card. And then this was just a piece of scrap, um, scrapbook paper. Uh, and then I've used a lot my, um, this from Tim Holtz. It, it came on another, uh, with a collection of stamps, but this is from Stampers Anonymous. And it's my splat. Um, I've been using this a lot because it looks like uh, just water stain. So I even did it on, a lot of the pages and things. And this is just a little, you know, tablet of just little scraps of paper that I had. Um, you know, you could tear them out and use them in your own collages or whatever, or write on them. But I just thought it was kind of a, some old things that you would see in these old houses. So that's just a little notepad and a little telegram. And then my next uh, page is one of my photos that I had printed. Um, I had aged them uh, with the app on my phone and then uh, pin printed it on vellum, did a tear rule around the edges and the vintage photo to make it even look older, and then just stitched it kind of like a flap um, because again, I want to do that, you know, see through the layers. And then this pocket, um, I had done a, a music collage. Now, a lot of, um, I should mention, a lot of the things that you see, uh, for example, all the photos that I'm using, um, because those are mine, I can share those. So I actually have a freebie file, which I will also attach in the description, where you can go find lots of little freebie things that you can use uh, if you're doing a Grinch journal like this. So you know, check that from time to time because through the process of this, I'll keep adding things to it. So um, there's a, a pretty good size freebie file now. And I think one of the things that I put in there um, was I did a collage of music uh, paper, vintage music. And I do have also one of um, some vintage postcards that I had. So I think those are there. If not, they will be in um, a pack at the end um, in my Etsy shop. And then this is one of um, just one of the Tim Holtz uh, cards that I thought was these could be the children in that house. And then these again were um, from a paper pack that I had and I, I just cut it in half uh, to make it look like little um, note cards. And then um, I used on the back to stamp um, a stamp that I had made, and I've shown this in one of the videos too, uh, using corrugated cardboard um, to make your own line stamp. And I kind of like that because it's just old and worn looking. So I've done that for some journal cards. And that is something new. Um, then I added um, a couple of videos ago, I had done an experiment with, I took all of my old vintage glass bottles and um, wanted to do something with those too. So I photographed all of them and then scanned them, um, changed the size, made some collage papers out of them. For this, I just made kind of a belly band 
out of them. I did have to trim off one of the bottles. I showed this in another video, but these were printed onto vellum so that you could see through them. But then I needed them sturdy for a pocket, so I uh, ran them through my laminator. So now they're sturdy, but you can still see through them. So that was one of the things I did with my little bottles. And then I showed this to, um, I ended up putting one in here, but I've done this card was um, from Tim Holtz, I believe memorandum. Um, and then I've just, I kind of envisioned this guy as, I'll show him in a second, but as maybe being a doctor, this particular house that I used the front door of, the front windows were um, paned glass, like store size front windows. And in one of them, there were shelves with lots and lots of uh, bottles. So it made me think that maybe the apothecary lived there, a doctor lived there, and you know, you if you needed to see him, you went to his house. So um, I I ended up kind of making this little bit then about the doctor. So I I found on the internet some uh, quotes, um, doctor related quotes, and this one says, "Wherever the art of medicine is loved, there is also a love of humanity." And so I've just done that again with my old typewriter. And then using some of my um, my scrim that I also uh, grunged up with my rusting technique, I thought it looked like um, old bandaging. So I, I used that to make a pocket and just use some embroidery floss to stitch around the sides. I've done this before and shown where I take the thread out of my sewing machine and then pierce the paper, um, just sew it through my sewing machine on a basting stitch, and that makes my holes completely even and already punched fast, and then I just can stitch those up. So that's what I've done there. And then I've worked on another little card. I haven't put too much on it, but it was, um, again, some paper from Tim Holtz, I believe, memoranda, the same page, and it's kind of um, had medical references and chemist references. So again, I did another quote. Um, he is the best physician who is the most ingenious, who is the most ingenious inspirer of hope. And then I've just added some more of my rusty, um, look like old bandage uh, fabric that I had rusted. So I put that in there. And then I had shown um, when I was doing the bottle, um, just kind of playing around with my bottles, using one to make uh, just this little notepad. So it's I've used a brad, um, an eyelet rather, to so that it can swivel and just some paper. And I cut this out with my Cricut. I had mentioned in that video that I was looking for some labels, um, pharmacy labels that I can put on. I found this really simple style in a bunch of different ones um, on, I think it was Graphics Fairy that someone referred me to. Um, so they're perfect. I just used those, um, did them on vellum, um, ran them through my sticker maker, and then just stuck them on that way. So that's just another little notepad that goes in my little bottle pocket. So I had this photo, um, this was one of the cards, again, Tim Holtz cards, and I just thought he looked like maybe he could be the doctor, so I'm not sure, but um, I just thought that was kind of maybe uh, someone that might have lived in that house. So I didn't want him just to see him, and I needed him in a pocket or something, so I just made a little vellum sort of pocket uh, using a tear ruler and... Um, the vintage photo to age it. And then I put it on a piece of, again, my rusted fabric that I had sewn to this flap of uh, coffee stained paper. So this this signet, uh, this folio here actually goes through quite large and I've shown it before, um, but it kind of is just opens out this way. So I put him in there and then I'm working on, I think another card, um, I think this is another piece of that paper, uh, but it just kind of goes, I, I like having a little bit of color in this book, but not too much and kind of just washed out and grungy. So this might end up being just like a little flip or something in here, uh, but that you'll have to wait till the very, very end when I show the whole book, I think, to see what happened there. Then I had done another um, page, and again, this is just the other side of that um, coffee stained paper, and I had just torn it across the top. It came out of a composition book, um, and then I think I added, I'm not sure which one, maybe, um, I'm not sure which color now that I used of uh, Distress Oxide, and just uh, put some around the edges. 
Um, and then again, this was another one of the photos. It's really not clear, but there was a, a, a dresser with a mirror and the mirror was missing. So I went ahead and used my die cut um, machine and found a shape that was about the size of what a mirror might be there. So whatever goes behind here, you know you're gonna see through also. And then there's a little old sewing machine here. So I thought this um, was a paper that I had done with my fresco finishes, but then I used one of the kind of industrial gear um, stencils. So I thought that might be fun to do some sewing related thing here. Uh, and then I'm gonna use this. I thought it looked, it came out of a completely different paper pack, um, 49 Market, I think. And it's just real subtle, but it kind of has a look of maybe a mirror or something. So I thought that might be a fun one to decorate and put here. And then again, I'll do some sewing machine thing here. And then the next page, um, I had used a piece of my rusted fabric because I wanted to join um, two of my uh, fresco finished papers and they were small book size. So to get a, a, a folio large enough for my book, I needed to put them together. So I just hand stitched them. Um, I believe I probably uh, did a little bit of a glue stick first just to keep them together and flat, and then uh, stitch those together. And then this little pocket I've shown in another video, but it's um, it's used using embossing, but manually with no machine or anything. I actually had this um, little back plate to a door handle, a, a dresser handle, and it was already pretty flattened. Uh, and I showed how I did this with watercolor paper, and then uh, just spritzed it over and over again, and just smooshed it, um, with my hands to get that embossing on that damp watercolor paper. And then when it dries, it's, um, you know, hard again. And then I just used different uh, metallic uh, mica sprays and um, ink oxides uh, on, the, on the ink pad, that kind of thing to get that to look like um, an actual metal piece. So that was kind of a, a fun experiment. And then I've done that same paper again um, that just looks good in this journal, I think, with a piece of a vintage coffee stained lace. And I'll decorate this up more later, but I just wanted to start getting some cards and things in. This one I haven't done one in yet. Um, I'm doing it kind of a rectangular pocket that's sort of like a corner pocket, so it's opened on two sides. And I stitched it on those two sides to a piece of the wallpaper. Um, and but then made my uh, cuts two different size die cuts so that it looked like uh, a mirror on the wall. There was a mirror on the wall in this photo, but it was crooked. So I just kind of made my own another little see-through thing. And I really like how this little dresser was missing a, a handle. And so I really liked using this pocket on the other side because it could be that, you know, something like that. So that's that one. I still need to do a card there. And then this side, again, I'm going to do another sewing thing. In a lot of the houses, there would be a sewing machine in a bedroom or the living room or the kitchen. In every house, it was different. So I kind of am repeating that through the book also. Um, so this was actually from a real piece of pattern paper. Um, and then I, I did a little hand stitching where, where the... The seam should have been the stitching line and then used um, my little zigzag scissors because you know if you sew, that's kind of what you do. Pinking shears, we call them. And then this was from a piece of uh, Tim Holtz paper pack that was sewing related. So um, it kind of stayed with the theme. And then the next page, um, I had, I think I had started, I had shown this once before. Um, this was part of that really big folio. So I kind of have them overlapping. So this was like a tab. So I folded it back on itself short and then used another one of my pictures. And this one, I took the same picture and I just tore it in half. Um, this part, it was kind of like a, a room that had a lot going on in it. Dining room table, fireplace, I think. A uh, place for the kids to do homework, a little sewing machine. There was a lot going on in this room. So I just tore it apart and, and staggered it just for interest and then made another little uh, notepad just with some 
you know, coffee stained paper. And then I used some of that, um, that watermark that's a uh, stamp on here also. So it's again, just um, a piece that looked like an envelope. So a little notepad there. And then this other side I had made um, and shown in a previous video, I had used um, the lino that you make your own stamps out of. And I actually had carved my own rubber stamp lined paper. And so that was this one um, that I had made. And then for this page, I really wanted to um, place this photo high on the page. And I've shown this before, but I just loved this um, this picture. I don't know if you can you can see very well in here. There's a tattered mattress here in the photo, and then a trunk and a dresser. And on the wall, they have actually wallpapered the wall with eight and a half by eleven pieces of paper pinned to the wall. And then the clothing is just hung on hooks on the wall, and really high on the wall. And so, for me, I kept wanting to just put this photo high on the page and I wasn't sure how I was going to make that become something. So I decided I would just sew it along the edge as kind of a flap that maybe would hold in something. And I wanted it to be uh, more substantial than just this to, to actually be able to hold something and larger. So I took a piece of my uh, rusted fabric that had some verdigris and some black moldy looking um, pieces in it and I thought that reminded me kind of of this tattered old stained mattress so it was kind of continuing that fabric feel um, and then I extended it out so it would kind of get you know curly and and folded um, I backed it with some old book page just to give the fabric some some weight so that it could actually hold something in. So I, I've put that there. And then to tack something behind it, I needed it to kind of be large on its own so that it would kind of stay. And I know a lot of you um, who've been doing this longer than I have, um, have collected a lot of ephemera and that kind of thing. And I know you can get uh, old envelopes and letters and things on Etsy, which I should probably order some because I don't have anything like that. But that's what I thought of was, you know, someone may have had a letter that they just hung on to forever. So I took an envelope and reverse engineered it to use it as a pattern to make an, um, an envelope just out of, you know, plain paper and then used my um, vintage photo to just age it and then just kind of crumple it. And I keep trying to handle it a lot so that the oils, you know, it'll just, you know, look older over time. So... I probably could improve on this. I know there are, in fact, I have some um, scans of actual vintage envelopes um, that I could maybe use, but I just did this as something kind of quick to do. And then again, I don't have an old letter. Um, maybe you do, or you can uh, find one. I just printed one off of uh, the internet and then just made it kind of look old and like it had been folded many, many times and then um, put it in my envelope. So it's just another place also for, for journaling and maybe adding things. So that's there. And then sh this one I had done earlier on in the series, um, just doing some experiments with uh, printing onto fabric. So there is a video that shows how I have done that um, and, and shown this page before. I ended up making her into a little pocket and I'm getting kind of to the back of this signature. So I kind of, she was kind of out the back door of a house. Um, and I just, I just love that picture. I know she looks really sad, but um, you know, it, it was a tough life back then. So I've used some vintage buttons and some of the rusted fabric again, just to kind of um, give it that look. And then, you know, left one corner where I didn't attach it because again, I want everything to look torn and tattered and old. And I put some book page behind here. And then this was actually done on one of my fresco uh, pieces. So, uh, but then she is attached to the, the book page to give the fabric some uh, strength for a pocket. So um, that little pocket. And then I had just this little card, um, came out of a, actually a little pad 
of just these little journal cards. So I thought that one was cute for there. So, and it fit. So I put that there. And uh, let's see. And so then that's the back side of uh, that, um, that piece of the fresco paper. I haven't done anything there yet, but I might dress that up a bit. And then this was kind of my kitchen one. And if you've been watching these videos, I, I've shown this, um, which was kind of an accident that this happened. I tried to clean it with a baby wipe, but I really like how um, how that that turned out um, folded like that. So I, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it. It's the picture um, of a kitchen. And I'm just gonna leave it tucked in here, I think, just because I like it. Uh, and I ended up using, this was um, a photo I had taken of uh, a, a galvanized wash sink that I have in my um, in my greenhouse and so I had just used uh, that to make a pocket and then um, this is the addition this was uh, the backing of this was uh, one of my uh, experiments I'm teaching myself uh, Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator and I had layered some uh, the floral leaf part is from uh, uh, inside of an old book the the cover or the inside cover and the liner pages, I guess you call them. And then um, the wood is actually a piece of old wood that I had taken in my greenhouse. So I've just layered those. And then this is um, using my jelly plate, stenciling on some uh, kind of a lace effect uh, for there. And then I went ahead and I went online. I thought it'd be fun since this was my kind of my kitchen uh, room of the house. I went and looked for some vintage uh, recipe cards and that was kind of hard to find some in that script. You know the handwriting back then was just different than it is now and to be able to find that kind of age of script um, took some looking but I did find some that I thought um, this is grandma's Christmas plum pudding uh, from 1877 uh, and this is another recipe. I can't really tell what it is, but um, it's also it's also plum pudding. But um, anyway, just some recipe cards that I could turn into journaling cards. So I thought that was just kind of fun for my for my kitchen page. And then uh, for the back, I had this old barn. I've shown this before. This was some of my experimenting very early on and I did turn it into a pocket. I don't have anything in there yet, but um, it's on some of my fresco paper. Um, this is also some of my fresco papers, some of my rusted fabric. And then um, when I did the rusting of the fabric, I used different elements, and these were some of the elements that I used that are now aged too from that process. So I just kind of did some slow stitching and um, just kind of did a little kind of an art piece. And this is, again, one of the photos is of a barn in Bodie. So I've I've got that little pocket. And then this one was a fun, um, I think probably a couple of episodes ago, the serendipity one, I think it was number seven. I showed how one of my rusted fabrics actually enhanced the, the photo, um, the mountains in the back. So this was just an old truck. And so I've just kind of done that as my last page. So that is my first signature. Um, it's close to finished. I do have a few little odds and ends I might add um, in those sewing pages that I want to do. So I have started on the, the next two, which is the church and a school. I'm going to do a hotel and saloon and the general store. And I'm just not sure what all this is kind of going at a slow pace for me um, because I have had lots of other things going on. So if you've hung in to this point, thank you. Um, and if you're curious, everything's good. I just um, have had a very busy month um, with some changes coming up. And as much as I have really enjoyed uh, working in my studio every day, um, I'm going to go through a little transition here. I'm going to keep, my goal is to keep on creating and sharing with you. Um, but this, um, this month we are in the process of purchasing another home. Uh, I don't know if you are someone that has done the back and forth thing we have for many, many years, and it has been so nice the last few years to just be in one place, um, but we were really missing family and <clears throat> where we had moved from, 
So we are we are still going to be here, um, but we are purchasing a house um, back in our old town. And um, the good news is it has a studio. So um, it's I'm feeling a little daunting about this whole process um, because it's quite a distance away. Uh, not by, you know, we can drive there, but it's like six and a half hours. So um, I'm going to be splitting time again, which is always awkward. Um, so I got to figure that out, how that's all going to work. But I will be setting up a studio there and the whole house. So it's going to take up a lot of my creative time. So uh, hopefully you'll stick with me. I do, uh, you know, like I said, plan to keep on doing this. And uh, it's just going to take me probably a month or so to get everything uh, switched over, finalized. We're not even closing until July, so uh, it's going to be a kind of a process. Um, and it takes so long to build a craft studio, all the stuff. So I don't know if I'm going to, the, the, the second studio, if that's going to, you know, be specific things. I can't haul stuff back and forth every time. So I'm just, I'm not really sure how it's all going to work. So I'm feeling a little, you know, uneasy about it right now but I'm going to embrace it. I am going to enjoy the process and um, start going through things and see what I can take there uh, and just have fun with it. So um, thank you for sticking by me. Um, I will hopefully get to work on this some more today. I'm working on the hearts that were in the last video. I know I lost a lot of subscribers um, because I switched it up but um, if you're one that stick, stuck with me, thank you. The hearts are coming along. I had quite a few orders um, from that video. So this week I'm hoping to have a lot of those finished. And, and then I will be taking less time to do those and, and back more on this. So again, thank you. Um, check the description down below for all the links. And give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this little flip through. And I will see you again soon. So go make something. Bye.